click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design 1. We are right now learning about different keys that are used in machine parts. In the last session we have seen there are different types which we are going to learn in this session and the significance that the keys have. Of course we have looked at the definition of key also. Let us look at the schematic which is drawn for the key. Key generally connect these two parts which are called shaft and hub. As you can see in this picture shaft has a groove inside it whereas the hub has also a groove inside it. So that when the assembly of shaft and hub is made between their grooves a key can be pushed in. This will felicitate their permanent fixation and since they are fixed then they can rotate together and not relative. So that is how the assembly comes into picture. We need to understand there are important factors like this dimension of key, this dimension of key and of course the length of key. Based on the power being transmitted and the rotational speed we will find out this dimension and that is what the purpose we have. Let's move ahead. Let us look at the failure. There are basically two ways in which a key can fail. It can fail in compression or it can fail in shear. When it comes to compression you think about the part which is embossed in in between the groove. In that case if the pressure is coming from both the sides it will undergo the compression. It is never the tension and that's why it may fail in compression or crushing. The second is shear. Of course one part will be in hub and another part will be in shaft and they will try to rotate initially in the opposite direction. And once they are set into motion, they will move in the same direction. But due to their internal inertias, they will try to move in opposite direction. And that's why the layer of the shaft or layer of the key, which is exactly at the center in a vertical manner, will try to undergo the shear. So that is what the failure will be in the keys. The next thing is, let's look at the formula associated with the square sunk key. Of course, for the design purpose. This is how a sunk key looks and this is how the square sunk key looks because the cross section is a square. So we can say that its breadth and height they are equal in nature and that is associated with the diameter of shaft it is one fourth of the shaft diameter. Second thing is the length of the key. Length of the key should be 1.5 times the diameter of the shaft and these are the international standards which one need to follow. Of course after design we will verify whether the standards are maintained or not otherwise we will have to go for the replication of it. Next important formula is the force. Like we have seen in case of compression force, compressive force will act on the key that will be having this particular value. Of course the derivation is not a part of our scope that's why we are skipping it but it will be the torsional moment divided by radius. So that gives me this particular formula. The shear stress will be abiding this particular formula where D is the diameter of shaft, B is the width of this key and L is the length of the key. And compressive stress will be given by this formula where F is the force acting on the key, H is the height of the key and L is the length of the key. It is also important to understand that power transmission is used by this formula. Compression, if, if I substitute this formula, the value of F back, I'll get this particular formula. And as we compare the shear and the compressive stresses, we get this particular relation. So these are the important formulae that we can use in the analysis or, or in the design analysis of a square sunk key. In the next video, we'll be looking at the analysis or the problem of design of a sunk key or basically it is the selection of sunk key. One thing let me mention clearly that sunk key or the products like sunk key or the keys they come in standard. So we need to basically select them based on their one of the dimension. So the same thing we will demonstrate in the next lecture. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.